Good morning, everybody. I hope you're enjoying this hot summer weather that we've been having. And I wanted to tell you about a trip that our Grace crew just took to Dollywood. Now, our Grace crew is our youth group at Grace Works Church. And uh, they used it as a fun trip, but also as a miniature uh, mission trip. They went trying to exercise uh, the scripture verses, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, which talks about being the light of the world. They even made friendship bracelets, handed them out to complete strangers at the park. And they created a, they created a video uh, that I want to show here. So um, now, now the, the Grace crew uh, just got back from Dollywood and they're getting ready to go on their youth camp here tomorrow, Monday. And uh, so they've been kind of busy, the workers especially. But check out this video that they shot uh, while they were in Gatlinburg. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine for others, that they may see the good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Hey everybody, imagine this flashlight is gone. When I move it closer to me, I'm illuminated. What happens when you move away? We are left in the darkness. Oh, I get it. When we have God in our lives, we're alive. When we take God out of our lives, we're in the darkness instead. And when we take our light to others, we illuminate them. Absolutely. We are called to share our light with others. Let's never hide under a basket from him, but share our light to the world. Hey, let's show our light to Hollywood. We can make friendship bracelets and hand them out. Remember, you are the light of the world. I just can't wait to give this to some random person. I hope they wear this every day and have faith, which is what mine is going to say. Maybe this will inspire someone. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know, I know, I know. I'm going to mention that in a little while. They're over there. Uh, you, know, you may have noticed we have a lot of um, Grace Crew gals, and Andrew is the one lucky guy with all these pretty girls. So if you have any, like, you know, nephews or grand grandsons or you have a son or, or whatever, we got a lot of pretty girls on our Grace Crew. So uh, anyway, um, just, just putting that out there. For, uh, for you guys. Um, you know, th these guys are going off to youth camp uh, tomorrow. And uh, by the way, my name is Michael Prettyman. If I haven't met you, I'm one of the pastors here uh, at Grace Works Church. And, um, and these guys are heading off to youth camp tomorrow. And I'm actually going to ask the guys, some of you who are going to youth camp, I see the terror in their eyes. Can you all come to the stage? You, you got to come to the stage. You just, they, they want to they wanna see there. Get, cheer them on. Get them up here. If I have some of them, and some of the workers, some of the workers that may be going along, yes, Tony's so nervous to come to the stage, I can tell. But we wanted to have, and I'll get you kind of in between these two monitors here, that way they can see you online as well. But um, now there are some more going to camp, and we've got some coming in, running down the aisle, come on down. So, uh, but these guys are going to be heading off to youth camp tomorrow. And uh, many of you may have gone to youth camp growing up, or maybe even you were part of a band camp or something like that. And, you know, in camp, it can be a very formidable. I, I remember very well the camps that I went to and the mission trips that I went on when I was younger. And this can be a very developmental part of your life. And so we wanted to have a just a prayer, I guess, kind of a commissioning uh, of these guys. And uh, as they went out, that the Lord would protect them and, uh, and everything else. So... Uh, so anyway, this is, like I say, some of them that are going, not, not everybody's here, but uh, um, what time are y'all leaving out tomorrow? 10 a.m. And what is the name of the camp? Camp is Generate in, in Knoxville, Tennessee. So uh, they're going to be up in Knoxville, uh, Tennessee. So, uh, but anyway, if you would join me in a word of prayer and just pray right where you are, just pray uh, the Lord's blessings over these guys and that God would uh, 
stir their heart and that it would just be a good time and that there'd be safety. So let's pray. God, I thank you that we can come here today. And God, first of all, we thank you for the many, many blessings that we have in our lives. God, we thank you uh, for this beautiful day we have outside this wonderful facility that we're able to meet in. God, we thank you for these uh, b- these beautiful youth that we have. And God, we just uh, pray over them right now. God, we pray. That we pray for their safety. God, we pray that you would just open their hearts. And God, as they go to this camp, be with all the workers, everyone involved, the music, uh, d- just everything going on there, God, and that you would move in them, God, and that this would be a memorable time for them for the rest of their life. And uh, But God, we also pray for the workers. Be with them as they are there, God, that you would encourage them, God, that they would be able to uh, rest well and also enjoy themselves. But God, most of all, that you are honored and glorified and lifted up in everything that's said and done, even in this camp. So, God, we just uh, thank you for this. We commit these guys to you. And, God, I speak on behalf of everyone in this room when I tell you that we love you. And, God, we thank you for the gift of salvation that we have only through Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. All right. Give these guys a hand. And I know our Grace crew and Grace kids are heading out. And they were giving me a look, just so you know, especially Kylie was looking over there, go give me this look, because they have some incredible outtakes that they did on that video. (laughs) I think they were shooting one part of it, and they had their cell phones up, and they were saying, God is the light of the world, and they had gone through a couple of takes, and this one was going perfectly, and then somebody's cell phone started ringing right in the middle of it. So so anyway, one day maybe we'll we'll put together an outtakes video. Okay, I got a thumbs up over there from the the Grace crew, but... uh, but thank you all for coming in here this morning. They're heading out. Um, and I encourage you, if you have, uh, like I say, a niece, a nephew, a grandchild, a child who uh, is, you know, high school age, middle school age, bring them here. We, we would love to have them as a part of our group here. And uh, uh, this morning, we're going to do something a little different like a, than we do in the normal order. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to Bill and let him take it from here. What I want to do this morning is to share with you what hopefully many of you have already read. If you use our Daily Bread devotional this morning, you read some very important words of Scripture. Let me say this. What's happening in our nation right now and in our world That's not us. We are Christians. We are family. We are brothers and sisters. We do not kill or attempt to kill. We do not force our opinion on others. Now, I don't think any of you do that. But I realize that sometimes that maybe indirectly by remaining silent or nodding my head that I might give someone else the idea that I am like the guy who stood before God yesterday to explain why he attempted to kill the former President of the United States and why he did kill others. We are not other countries who fight, assassinate, and kidnap rivals. We are a Christian nation. And if you and I say so and live so, no one can argue with us because we are enough people to be the light of the world and to lead this nation back to God. So for the remainder of the time from now until the election, let me ask you when someone starts to talk to you politics, you just do what I'm about to do. Just say, Brother Gary, I appreciate your views. Let's pray about it. I tell you, they'll never talk to you again about politics. Seriously, you know what I mean. We don't want to keep going in the wrong direction. We need 
to save our country so that we can be the light of the world. And today's scripture from our daily bread says how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on the collar of Aaron's robe, Aaron being the high priest. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Father, continue to bestow your blessings on our nation. We live in a world that is headed for disaster. But like the little village of Bethlehem, may we be the birthplace of peace, of light, and of hope. May people come to us, not for financial, material gain, but to know and understand the light of the world. Shine through us, God, is our prayer. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, guys, it's so good to see you here this morning. I see we have uh, we had a wedding here yesterday, by the way, and I see the newlyweds sitting right here on the front row. So uh, if you may have to find them down here, I'd point at them, but my hands are busy. Um, so they're right there. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, congratulations. And uh, but I want to give you time, guys, a chance to get up and uh, get up where you are. Just go ahead and stand up and uh, get out there. Find somebody maybe they don't normally find on a Sunday morning and uh, welcome them to Grace Works Church. Maybe come down here and find the newlyweds and tell them congratulations. And uh, and uh, we'll get to singing here in just a moment. you probably sang growing up in church. Love lifted me. Y'all singing along with us. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. And very deeply stained within, I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from
going to continue singing this morning, and um, you can go ahead and roll that next track. And uh, But that was Pat playing the piano. Pat has been out with a hip replacement surgery recently, but Pat is here this morning and going to be playing a little bit later. So glad that she is here this morning. We're going to work her back in slowly, so we'll, we'll do a couple of more tracks to let you keep recovering over there. But let's sing to him this morning, Christ Alone, our cornerstone. Built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest way, but holy.
offering this morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and you guys can go ahead and grab a seat here this morning. Um, I want to give you time, guys a moment this morning just to take time to pray. And talk to the Lord this morning and thank Him for something this morning. I know we've, um, uh, Bill talked about some of the events that happened in our country yesterday, but we are blessed to live in this country that we live in. We are blessed to be able to come here this morning in this beautiful building where we have air conditioning. Some of us are freezing to death and some of us are sweating to death, but, but we have options. We're blessed. So this morning, would you just take a moment where you are just to thank the Lord for something? And tell them you love them. We're going to sing another song here in a moment, but don't, don't miss this opportunity right now.
God, we come before you this morning just thanking you that we are able to gather here once again this morning. And uh, God, we are so blessed and we acknowledge that uh, this morning. And uh, God, it, as the song says, I pray that you would receive all the praise here this morning. And I speak on behalf of everyone once again here this morning, God, when I tell you from all your children, all your kids, all my brothers and sisters, God, we love you. God, we love you and we thank you for the gift of salvation that we have only through Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Hey, good morning and welcome to worship. I apologize. There are many of you I did not get to speak to this morning. We, I don't know if I was on the wrong side of the room or you came in, you snuck in and didn't want to speak to me, but glad you're here. Glad all of you are here. Glad we're able to gather. Everyone I trust had a great week. Yeah? I had a great week. I had the opportunity to be a part of a wedding ceremony for DJ and Kayla. And by the way, y'all left these uh, eucalyptus leaves. Y'all need to clean that stuff up. <laughs> Just leave it for later. <clears throat> I had a real special appointment Thursday. I had lunch with Jimmy Lail. Jimmy, it was a highlight of my week. Thank you so much. Jimmy bought my lunch. If you don't know Jimmy, he is a special individual. He, of course, is a member of Grace Works Church. He is a trustee of the church. He is president of a Bible study group that meets on Sunday mornings. And uh, Jimmy and I got together Thursday. And Jimmy, I've got to ask, in our little appointment, did you write me into your daytimer, to your calendar? You did. I wrote your name in my daytimer, too. Jimmy, when we got together, before we got together, did it ever cross your mind as to what you were going to wear for our lunch appointment? Okay. I did. I was going to wear shorts, and I thought, I'm getting together with Jimmy, so I wore khakis and a grace work shirt. Uh, Jimmy, did, was, did you have to cancel anything for our appointment? No. No. Okay. Great. Neither did I. I didn't have any other anything else to do that day. <laughs> you either. <laughs> well, uh, Jimmy, I, one thing that happened, you and I texted back and forth. I said, you want to get together for lunch? And you just responded with Thursday, 1130 at Greg's. You didn't ask why, did you? No, he trusted me. He trusts me. How many of us had an appointment, a special appointment this week with God? How many of us had an encounter with God where we cleaned our slate, where we put him on our calendar, where we made him priority? I trust you all took time this week to spend focusing on the Father and sharing and listening to what he had to say. But let me ask you, we all recognize the need to spend time with God. Have you ever asked the question, why? Why would God want to meet with me? Jimmy didn't even ask. He just told me where to be and what time. But having a meeting, an encounter with God, do you understand why? Why it's so important? What would draw us to prioritize our time with Him? I want to point us to a passage of Scripture in the Old Testament. In the second book of the Bible, in Exodus chapter 3, God has an appointment with a man by the name of Moses. I love the character of Moses. There's so much to learn from his life. And in this particular occasion, in Exodus chapter 3, beginning verse 1, we can find reasons why God wanted to meet with Moses, but why God wants to meet with each of us. It should motivate us to prioritize our time with him. It should inspire us to seek him out. To look forward to meeting with God. Look with me at uh, Exodus chapter 3, beginning with verse 1 and following. 
Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great light. Why the bush is not burned? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. And then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. And then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a, to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. And now, behold, the, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. In just the brief moments that we have to look at this passage, what I want us to look for is why would God want to meet with me? Why would God want to meet with you? You may be sitting there thinking it's not important. But I think from this particular account in the life of Moses, we can see why we are important to God. First of all, you'll notice here, this is the burning bush account. Moses, he's, in the, he's out in the desert, in the wilderness of Midian. If you're familiar with the story, Moses was born in Egypt. And he was raised in Pharaoh's court. The first 40 years of his life, he was part of royalty. But then he killed an Egyptian, defending an Israelite. And the result was he left, he fled from Egypt. And he finds himself in Midian where he meets Jethro. He marries one of Jethro's daughters and he becomes a shepherd. And for the next 40 years, all those dreams of royalty are gone. He is a shepherd. He's gone from being in Pharaoh's court to the desert, watching sheep. And it's this occasion where he finds himself out in the desert seeing a bush that's burning, which is not unusual in the desert, but there's something different about this bush. It's not being consumed. And so the curiosity gets the best of him, and he goes to see what is happening here. Why is this bush not burning up? Why is it not being consumed? And that's where we find ourselves today in, in chapter 3, is he comes before... God, this bush, God calls out to him, says, Moses. He calls him by name. Moses, Moses. And his response is, here I am. Some translations would say, it's me. Yes, it's me, Moses. And he's given the words by God, take your sandals off. Don't come any closer. You're on holy ground. As you see in this account here, God wants to meet with us. He wants to reveal himself to us. He wants to make himself known to us. He points Moses to the idea that he is a holy God. He is different. He is set apart. And he tells him, he says, it's not this ground that you're walking on, but it's my words that makes this place holy holy he is holy and he wants us to know that in first samuel chapter 2 hannah praying for her son prayed she says there is none holy like the lord for there is none beside you there is no rock like our god 
And in this particular encounter with God, God points out the difference, the gap between God who is holy and man who is sinful. And man cannot come into the presence of a holy God. God has made a provision for us, and that provision is found only in Jesus Christ. God was emphasizing to Moses there's a difference between humanity and divine. But yet, he wants us to know him. He wants us to know his holiness, but also he wants us to know him personally. He wants to know, so he shares his identity. Notice in the passage that God speaks, and he said, I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. It's not like God's trying to be secretive here. God says, this is who I am. I am holy. I'm different than you. And also, I'm the God of your ancestors. God wants to make himself known to us. He's not trying to hide from us. He's not some kind of puzzle that we have to try to figure out. He is holy. He is God. But he wants us to know him. And to know him personally. Moses, though, needs to know who he is. In order to approach God, we have to know who he is. Before one can approach God, we must have that relationship with him, establish that relationship with him. God makes it clear. It's not like he just kind of inserted these ideas. Hey, I'm the God of your fathers and go down the list of all your ancestors. No, he's saying, this is who I am. I want you to know me. And God wants us to know him. And that's the reason he wants to meet with us. So that we can get to know him. If we come to worship and we don't know him, then all we're doing is Spiritual gymnastics, exercises. We're just going through the motions. God wants us to know him, and he makes an invitation. God does not force himself on us. He didn't force himself on Moses. It says that Moses turned aside. He noticed something, and he sought out God. And God made himself known. That's a simple idea of the gospel. God wants to make himself known. A gospel is God making himself known to man. Making himself known through his son, Jesus. He doesn't want to be a distant God. He doesn't want to be unknown. He doesn't want to be secretive. He wants a relationship. A relationship with us, but yet he doesn't force himself on us. As I said, there's a gap. There is a distance between a holy God and sinful man. And in order to experience a holy God, we have to become holy. We have to become holy, but we can't do it ourselves. And that's the gospel The idea that Christ came. Colossians 1.22 says that he became, he came so that we might be holy. It's only through Christ that you and I are able to go into God's presence. To have that growing relationship with him. God does tell, give words of caution to Moses not to approach Stand at a distance. Speak to him from there. But at the same time, he speaks face to face with Moses. We can never minimize God's holiness. We struggle to grasp the fact he is a holy God. He is not like us. He's pure. He's set apart. But he's not just holy but he is a personal, personal God. 
He's not some impersonal force. He wants to interact with us. He wants a relationship with us. And it should draw us to want to spend time with him, to to prioritize that daily appointment with him. The 1993 movie, Jurassic Park, was set on the premise that there was a business tycoon that set up a theme park. At this theme park, with the use of some scientists, they had found out how to clone dinosaurs that are obviously extinct. And there's one particular scene in that movie that really stands out to me. This businessman, he brought in several scientists to visit to see this park before it opens. And he brings in this paleontologist, this man who studies dinosaurs. This man has spent his life digging in the dirt, pulling up bones, fossils, trying to put together images of what the dinosaurs must have looked like, what they must have been like. In this one particular scene, this paleontologist comes face to face with a dinosaur. And he's speechless. And then all of a sudden his knees buckle and he goes to the ground. And it's easy to overlook the scene, but to think about the fact this man has spent his life trying to collect information. It's imperfect. But at this very moment, he's seeing the real thing. God desires a personal relationship with us. He doesn't want us just collecting information about him. He wants us to realize he is real. We can interact with him. He is not some concept that is so far in and out there that we don't have any grasp of who he is. He goes to great effort, great lengths to make himself known. And he makes himself known through his word. God is holy, but he's also personable. But in this account of Moses, verses 7 through 9, God explains the fact He knows what's going on in Egypt. Keep in mind, Moses was in Egypt 40 years, then he's in the desert 40 years. And God says, I've heard what's going on. I see what's going on. I know what's happening in Egypt. I know the oppression of my people. And I want you to know, I'm coming down to deliver them. I care about them. And one reason it's so important that we have an appointment with God, be led to have that time with Him, is that He wants to reveal to us what we mean to Him. We're special to Him. We're special to God. He loves us. He cares about us. He knows what's going on in our lives. Moses hears the words of God. As he points himself, he makes him aware of who he is. But at the same time, he's telling him, this is what they mean to me. And this is what you mean to me. I care about you. I know what you're going through. And I care. And at the same time, God knows what each one of us are dealing with at this very moment. And he cares about us. And you may be thinking, well, God, why don't you do something right now? Act upon it now. God knew for 40 years. He knew for several hundred years what was happening in Egypt. But his time is not like our time. God heard the cry of Israel. He noticed their suffering. He notices our suffering. And God knows all that's going on in our world today. He knows what's going on in America today. He knows what's going on in Chattanooga today. And he cares. 
He's given us opportunity now to move, to be used by Him. His heart is melted with love for us. Justin, Bernie just left the room. Justin was sitting over here with our youth. Justin has been our youth ministry director for the past two years. And there's one thing Justin does every time he's with our kids. I've heard him do it over and over. He tells, he, he won't leave them without saying, Jesus loves you. And he has this big smile on his face. We say that all the time, don't we? But I realized how profound that is. Some of the greatest theology is in three words. God loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves each one of us. He wants the very best for us. Sometimes we don't realize what the best is, but he cares for us, and he wants the very best. St. Augustine is given credit for a quote that says, God loves each of us if there was even if there was only one of us. Do you feel that special with God? He loves us. The gospel message points us to the fact that God cares about us. And he did something to prove it. If nothing more, God demonstrated his love to us through his son Jesus by dying on the cross. He did it because he loves us and he wants to show us. In Moses' life, God wanted to work, bring about change. He wanted to change Moses. He wanted to change Israel. He wanted to fulfill his promises. In verse 10 of the passage we just read, God had already said, I know what's happening. He said, I'm coming down. And I'm sure at that point, Moses must have thought, ooh, okay, good, go God. But then God says, Moses, come. I want you to go to Egypt. I want you to go to Egypt. You're going to lead my children out of Egypt. Why, is it, why should we make priority, give priority to our appointment with God? He wants to reveal to us his mission for us. He wants to show us, I want to send you. I want you to go. God is a sending God. Jesus said to the disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. In the first church, they received the same words as when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You will be my witnesses. I'm sending you out. I'm sending you to share the good news. The world needs our prayers. Our nation needs our prayers. Our city needs our prayers. But it also needs us to share the gospel. The fact that God loves everyone and that Jesus died for the sins of everyone. He comes to us and says, I've got a, a ministry for you. I want you to share what I've done for all. My wife, Lena, and I just recently got on board with the Chosen miniseries. It's been about four years out, four or five years, and we just, we haven't sat down to watch it. We started watching it recently, and one of the early episodes centers around Jesus and his interaction with children. If you've seen this, you may be familiar with this. A little girl stumbles upon the camp where Jesus is living out in the wilderness. Jesus is not there. She looks around, she notices it. No Jesus, but she leaves everything as is. And then she comes back and she brings a friend with her. And they kind of stand off at a distance from Jesus. Jesus, recognizing they're there, he doesn't threaten them. He kind of offers a prayer, hoping that they would join him. And then the next day, the little girl and the friend come back. 
This time they have a little bit of interaction with Jesus. And then the next day, Jesus is waking up. And he wakes up and opens his eyes. And the little girl is standing over him. And there's a little boy. The little friend is there. But also some of their friends are standing, all looking down on Jesus. I laughed at it, and then I realized there's a truth there. As you notice, it started with one person. They found Jesus. They had an encounter with Jesus. And then they went and found a friend and brought the friend. And then those two went, and they found their friends. They were on a mission. They realized who Jesus was. And they wanted others to know him. That's a mission that's not given just to children. It's a mission that's given to all God's children. To share. God wants to meet with us. He wants to meet with us so that we might know Him. So that we might know that we are loved by Him. And He wants us to meet with Him so that He can point us and put us on mission. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, with this occasion of gathering for worship. Father, I pray as, as we have sung songs, as we have prayed prayers, if, as we have fellowshiped, as we've called up on life together, as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray that you've been pleased. We give thanks to you for the opportunity. And Father, we pray now Asking that the words that we read in your word, Father, we pray that these words would be placed in our hearts. And may they be lived out in our lives. Father, we, we are in awe of you, for you are holy. And you desire a relationship with us. Father, we're not worthy, but yet you love us. And Father, you have given your son for us. And we give thanks. And Father, we pray that uh, as, as your children, as we encounter you, Father, we pray that we would be changed. Changed so that we take the gospel from beyond these walls to the world. Well, Father, I pray for your church at Grace Works. May we be a people that know you, that worship you and may we be a people to share about you with the world father we pray in this moment that you'd move in us may your spirit fill us may your spirit move us we love you and we pray this in jesus name amen would you stand with me as we worship together i'm not sure how the words the Old Testament Exodus impacts your life where you are right now. I'm not sure how the Holy Spirit may be speaking to you right now. A decision you need to make, a way you need to respond to Him. I'll trust that you'll follow His leadership. I'll ask Bill to join me. Bill will be over here to this side. I'll be here to this side. But I also really want to emphasize the need to pray. Pray. First, that we would encounter God, but then we would also take God to this world. And so I invite you, Grace Works Church, use this time to worship, responding to Him, but also calling out to Him in prayer. However you need to respond, may you do so now. Will you sing this with me? Change my heart, O oh God. So change my heart, oh God, and make it ever true. Oh, change my heart, oh Oh, uh-huh. 
two weeks, I've emphasized the need to pray. Part of this came from the uh, Joint House Resolution. Pray. Pray this month, every single day, for our state, our nation. Was there not enough evidence yesterday of the need to pray? And not just to pray, saying, God, forgive me, but God, use me. Take me, use me. Has that been your prayer? We're only at the halfway point of this month, and look where we are. Church, if you've not joined to pray each day, if you've not committed to pray for our city, our state, our nation, please start today. Would you bow and let's pray right now. Father, we do call on your name. In earnest prayer, Father, we call out to you and asking you to have mercy on us. Father, your church, we failed. Father, we've taken on the responsibility or taken the responsibility for granted, Father, that you're, we're to be witnesses. And follow, Father, all around us, we see the evil, the darkness, the violence, the hatred. Oh, God, have mercy on us. And, Father, may you forgive your church, and may you use us. Use us, Father, to demonstrate love. Father, use us to be peacemakers. Father, may we give evidence of what you've done for us, and may the world desire to know you through us, through our testimony. Father, I pray for your church at Grace Works. Father, may we be a people that have bowed down to you. And may we be a people that have gotten off our knees and gone into the world to live and to serve you. Father, may you lead us this week. And may we make your name known. Lord, we love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have a seat for just a minute. I want to encourage you to continue to pray for our youth and pray for me, please. Uh, I'm getting too old to get up early and try to keep up with kids all week, but I will be uh, going with that group. This week we get back Friday, and then Saturday I get in the car with another group of youth. That's my family, and we go on vacation. So you might want to pray for the youth of our church and the youth of my family. So um, I will be going uh all this week and then next week and so Bill's already escaped he's already working on a sermon for Sunday and the Sunday after and uh, y'all be here to support him encourage him and also take the opportunity to invite someone bring someone and introduce them to your church family it's so good to have Pat Vaughn at the piano today and once more we're happy for you and happy for us too and I know we've had several that have been in and out of the hospital this week we've had several folks recovering from illness seems like we make that announcement quite frequently but it's so good to see all of you here and it's good to see and have guests in our presence so thank you for joining us today in worship I pray that God blesses each one of you this week may you see and recognize his hand at work and may he be using and working through each of you. God's blessings on you. You know, I'm such a creature of routine, but today I want to close out with a song, and y'all sing it with me. I think it's appropriate. Pat actually pointed me to this. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. If y'all would sing this with me, and then we'll dismiss after this. But uh, you can stay in your seat, or you can stand if you want to sing it. The words will be on the screen. Say let.
see some of you joining hands. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. for being here this morning. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. Offering boxes are in the back still. So uh, as you go out the door, if you brought an offering, you can drive that off. Let's sing them out with God Bless America. And God bless America. This land